criminal defense attorney and anchor and long crime network Bob Bianchi joins me now to discuss. Bob, it's great to have you back on the show. So to recap, this is a man who plowed into a Christmas parade in Waukesha, Wisconsin. Uh, he's had a past of sharing sharing memes and, and sen saying things online that were very racist towards white people. And so uh, a lot of people have said this was a racially motivated crime. Where are we at in this in this uh, trial? Is his behavior going to make things worse for him? You know, Addison, we're covering this extensively, gavel to gavel at the Law and Crime Network, and I got to be honest with you, watching it as a trial lawyer, I, I'd use the word painful. That's what I was telling my colleagues. Uh, this is an, look, we see a lot of bad people, whether I prosecuted them, you defend them, but this guy's got this certain je ne sais quoi of contemptibility that's unbelievable. <clears throat> He's not only his disruptions with the court, his disrespect. It's just a whole personality that he's throwing out there. And so representing himself is the worst thing he could do because the jury gets to see that with every question he asks these victims, uh, with the manner in which he's uh, uh, it's being disrespectful to the court. So it certainly isn't helping him that way. The only thing that I would caution the prosecutor and the judge, who have both done an excellent job, because it's very hard as a prosecutor, it's very hard as a judge, to deal with somebody representing themselves, especially a contemptible person like this is steady pace wins the race don't let him make you do anything that's going to create a reversible error and so far the prosecutor and judge have done a very good job as you can see the judge she's almost exasperated but her uh, judicial temperament is really keeping me in control and in the end analysis this judge is saying to herself i just want to make sure this record is clear he was advised of all of his rights he knew what those rights were and he waived those rights so in the end analysis he doesn't do himself any favors here other than demonstrate that uh, he's just a complete jerk, for lack of a better expression, not a legal term. Uh, lastly, I just say, I, I think the only thing that this genius may be thinking that he's doing is creating an issue with regard to his me mental competency, mm. which was something that he tried to raise originally. But it's very clear that he does understand the nature of the proceedings and everything that he's supposed to be doing. The only problem is he just doesn't want to do it, Addison. Now, he, he, this is a 76-count criminal trial that's a... a Pretty, pretty big trial. What is the minimum sentence that he could get away with, and what is the maximum sentence that he could be facing? Well, I mean, the minimum thing that could happen is that he's acquitted. Uh, we're all trying to scratch our heads as to understand exactly where his theory of his defense is. When, when, when we look at his questioning, it seems to us that he's trying to indicate that he may not have been the driver. He's going to lose, go down in flames on that. So the minimum would be a dismissal in the case. The maximum sentence that he can receive, unfortunately, is a life sentence and consecutive life sentences for each of the individuals that he killed and, of course, consecutive sentences for those who were injured. So in essence, he'll never see the light of day again. The maximum sentence is going to be life in prison. I know a lot of people have, uh, you know, w with cases like this that are just so, so gruesome. I mean, running over a child and, and several other people killing several people. Uh, this is something that a lot of people think merits a, a death sentence. Is that is that a, not an option in the state of Wisconsin where this happened? You know, I, I don't know specifically about Wisconsin in particular. I just know that they did not file for the death penalty in this particular case. But you bring up a good question. Uh, when there is a state that has the death penalty, would this be a death-qualified defendant? In other words, is this the person, as a prosecutor, we have to make these decisions that we believe the aggravating factors are so great that, in, unlike normal murder cases, if you will, it justifies the imposition of a death sentence? And I think in a case like this, if there was a death penalty available, and again, I don't know about Wisconsin in particular, you certainly, as a prosecutor, would look very seriously, given the gravity of the number of people injured, including the young people who are injured, those would be considered aggravating factors for the death penalty. Bob Bianchi, we are all out of time, but thank you so much for, for breaking this down. This is a, a trial that the nation is going to be watching in, in the coming days. So I really appreciate you breaking all this down for everyone. Always a pleasure, Ashton. Thank you.